OK, moving on. Up next, we have our panel talk number three for the day with an art segment with one of my old friends, in fact, actually, a local artist, Steve Lawler. But he also goes by the moniker Majoko. Uh, you may have seen his stuff around, but maybe not, not really known who the man is behind that artwork. But uh, super creative. Absolutely love what he does. Uh, he's, a, he's an established artist, a creative director who's worked around the world after graduating from Fabrica Academy. And slightly more than a decade ago, he set up a creative network under Cult Gallery and Magazine, became the creative director of the Unusual Network, and he's currently working on the digital Akira exhibition and Aya magazine for kids. And Aya is damn clever. It's not like Aya, but it's Aya. So I love that. I've always loved that when he came up with that. Clever, like this guy. Uh, Akira features 14 pieces of artists from Asia. It was first conceptualized as a physical space, but obviously has had to turn digital and is now a fully reimagined with video, gaming, and animation experiences, inclu including a giant buddy and teddy bear by Japanese artist uh, Humanoise, Humanoise and Singapore based Colombian artist Jabba One. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome. Steve Lola, a.k.a. Majoko. Bro. <laughs> thanks for joining us. <laughs> okay, thanks. You all thanks good? for having me. Yeah, okay, yeah, good, yeah, thanks, yeah. yeah. So I think, um, well, you've mentioned a few things that we were working on just now. Um, I think the Akira project is something that's, it's online at the minute, but it happened during lockdown. And one of the reasons was because we couldn't do a physical show. Um, and I'll probably show some uh, visuals about that in a, in a little while mm -hmm. but I think um, yeah I think just in general you know to say like I just had a an exhibition the secret room yeah, yeah. Um, and that was like a hidden little room in in Dempsey, Dempsey where yeah. we uh, I suppose it took the idea of like what are those like illegal drinking like dens a like a speakeasy yeah, so yeah. tiny little room um, and there was uh, open to the public, but it was, it was personal, it was cool. I stayed there the whole time and got to see everybody, lots of old friends. Yeah. And um, whenever I do my own artwork, I feel a bit guilty because I'm doing all uh, my own stuff and it's quite selfish. So, so I kind of like to throw open the doors and do um, group shows now and again. Yeah. And also this other project, which is Aya, which is like... Uh, I love this. Uh, this, is one, this one's like a fake fake newspaper for kids so we can fill their head with nonsense um, it's a woman hires a private jet for a cat true or false false that's ah, true okay Christmas lights was invented by a kid true or false true okay that's true okay. you're right <laughs> dun, dun. okay you got so a good it's, it's an educational informative a uh, newspaper magazine for children, but to do it in a, in a visually attractive way. Yeah, it's a way, it's two things. It's kind of showcasing art and creativity, but it's also like uh, talking about social issues, maybe things that are a bit boring or that people don't want to talk about. Mm. And I mean, we say kids, but it's basically for anyone, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it, actually here, there's an advert for our next exhibition, which is the, uh, the incredible, magical, moving sticker exhibition yeah, yeah. Um, and the idea of that is it's a sort of gif sticker show so we'll nice. we'll probably show some uh, pictures about that in a minute Should and I... actually your, your inspiration to this and if I'm not if I'm not wrong correct me if I am wrong but I remember this was when uh, you 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 had your child and you thought you wanted to to do something again for more information educational for for the next generation it's true so um, so when I had, I got a kid, baby man. Yep. Uh, he's nine now. now. <laughs> which I, I say this as when he had his kid, who is now nine, which is yeah, it wow. goes quickly. And I think like oh. that that this uh, publication is kind of growing with him. So initially it was designed for sort of four or five year olds, and then it was designed for eight or ten year olds, and 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 now he's a teenager, a nine year old teenager. <laughs> we're doing it for like that kind of age group. And I think when it's a bit older, you can play a bit more on the, the sense of humor and the, the level of knowledge and the, the sort of sophistication of things that they, yeah. 
that, well, again, world knowledge, references, memes. I think these are things that they can kind of get when they're a bit older. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's become a fun platform. So it's got social good and it's also mm, kind of beautiful and, and designy and, and I think like hopefully a bit cheeky. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, kind of inspired by Mad Magazine and the old sort of subversive publications of those days, yeah. Which is basically you in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I did used to do Cult Magazine, which yeah. was 10 years. I mean, that was 20 years ago. Wow. Christ, so Cult Magazine, we lasted for about 10 years. That was my previous project. Yeah. We had a gallery and we used to do sort of street art exhibitions and, and also these kind of pop culture theme. So we did a, a Chunking Express mm. exhibition. We did um, uh, all sorts like, um, and, and of course we did The Shining, we did Blade Runner, and they're very much like fan art yeah. things. So there's two reasons for doing it. One is like the public, it, it's quite accessible for the public, right? So they've got an idea of art that they can relate to and they can, they can kind of have an opinion on. It doesn't really alienate them. And then for the artists, it's quite exciting because it's like something that's close to them personally and they'd love, they've always wanted to make an artwork about, you know, a, a Kubrick film or, or, or um, in this case, Akira. And so it was very easy to um, put together this exhibition because everyone you kind of met on the way would just, just snowball in terms of like, uh, momentum and, and positivity around the project. So it was like, if I asked you, do you want to come to an Akira show? You'd be like, yeah, I mean, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a Japanese iconic mm. animated movie from... Well, maybe uh, I'll... Yeah, you could pop something up while we do that. We've got to say the magic word. Play Abracadabra, play the uh, video. <laughs> <laughs> is it going to play? Yeah. Or did it press play? And I mean, I remember watching Akira go. from... So this is, this is a walkthrough yeah, of... a um, young teenager. This is a walkthrough of the exhibition, so it looks a little bit like you're in Neo Tokyo. Yep. It's a, it's a virtual space, um, and and originally this was supposed to be a physical show, like we right. mentioned, and literally it would be if it was physical. down in Pasir Panjang, like okay. this friend's got this quite really cool space. Yeah. And um, I think we still intend on doing it there. Okay. Uh, it's just, it was April, like. Things were getting bad, you know, this idea of me standing at the door, taking temperatures was intimidating. So I kind of said, let's, let's try and do something online. And um, I mean, there's, there was a lot of stuff happening in terms of art galleries shift into these virtual spaces. But what seemed to be the trend was like these kind of white rooms that was like uh, point and click and shift around. And... And there's a, a lad called Race who's uh, a 3D designer um, and he's got this company, Metamo Industries. And I think they, they even did some of the culture cartel stuff. Right. Um, and they're really great at creating these 3D environments. And, and Race totally got it. He was like, yeah, well, we don't want to do a kind of boring space. Like, why don't we make it rich with sound and, and try and like start to, to change the experience a little bit of our online exhibition. And so... Um, so that's what we did. And yeah, okay, it was quite simplistic in a way. It was still just one room. Um, but we were able to hopefully offer something quite fun. You, you could buy the artwork and, and you know, people, yeah. could, people could like um, comment and, and things like that. And we've disabled some of that now. But I think um, the sales were quite decent. I can show you one or two of the artworks yeah. um, on, is that on? Abracadabra again, please. Abracadabra magic slideshow. <laughs> I'll, uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. so here's one of the artworks. This is by a guy called Jun and Yana. Uh, well, it's a couple, actually. So they're Singapore illustrators. Um, go under the name of Bureau UFHO. Oh, nice. And, of course, it's beautiful. Um, there, was, there was a couple of pieces by... Um, there were, well, how many artists were there? Was there 10 or 12 artists? Yep. And... How come this not skipping? Is it not going next one? There we uh, go. That's mine on the right oh, or on the, the left? Right. On the left or the right? On the, the noisy one. They, okay, on the right. Yeah. And then Sid Wills, also a Singapore artist. That. Basically, like, these are all friends. These are all buddies that were, um, you know, I knew they would make something sick. I knew they would make something... That's cool, man. Like, take... 
a moment of that film and, 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 and exploded out into their own universe. This is Eric Fernando on the right and uh, Humanoids on the left. And again... Everything I'm seeing now is a moment in the movie that I remember. I feel like yeah. someone asked it's us, like, like how do you expand on such a beautiful thing? And it yeah. was like, well, to be honest, you know, that's, that's exactly it. You, you can freeze frame a part of that film and, and grow yeah. each one out. So yeah. there, is, there is that potential. I think that was what was exciting for us as artists about it as well. Yeah. Um, and um, I think then, yeah, that's that for now. Yeah. I think for those, for those of you who haven't watched Akira, I would recommend... Oh yeah, so actually you can, if you want to see it, it's on our on the Culture Cartel website, right? Okay. There's the walkthrough of the exhibition and then on my uh, website, which is the Unusual Network, and you can, you can kind of go and experience it all there. Nice, nice, nice. Like I said, every, every art piece I've been looking at so far has represented something like him on his bike, uh, that's the explosion, you said, uh, neon light Japan, you know, because it, it, that's what it was. <laughs> the the melting, the guy melting. I mean that that that's these are images that are burned in my brain from watching it. What I, 20, I think twenty five years ago. I think the only disadvantage to having a digital experience was the scale. You know, I mean, when you have it in a space like this, like when you see an artwork the size of this sign, you know, then it's got a different kind of impact. But I think it's testament to the work that even in a small screen. It had, um, you know, a kind of visual impact that was. Um, how, how big would they be if you were to? So they're, to, to they're make it a physical. Basically, A zero, which is just just over uh, a meter tall. Okay, so like um, the uh, the bus stop poster size. Not quite that big, but oh. by the time they're framed up, like they are like yeah. quite dominant uh, pieces, and I think. We had about 10,000 10, or so visitors to the, to the space and it, and it was getting shared a lot mm. online. So, so it was obviously resonating somehow with the audience, even with those restrictions of just being um, a digital experience. So again, we, um, we learned a lot from that and I, and I feel like got a bit of confidence in terms of doing another show online. Mm. And I, I feel like a marriage between physical and uh, digital is, is the way to go. Like what we're doing now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except but, yeah. like, there's no art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but you know that, that that kind of hybrid now, which is, which is the new 2020, right? This is this is the way we have to kind of figure things out. It was fun because we were both sort of sat. We'd both sort of been playing Fortnite <laughs> to see the Travis Scott concert, you know? Yeah, yeah. And and what they really did was they unlocked this thing in our heads, which was like, shit, a concert has just been. Yeah. totally deconstructed and and what about you know and, it, and then of course you relate it to your own industry so it's like hey wait what about showing an exhibition in this kind of yeah. environment where you can have sounds and, and it doesn't need to be a white room and I think that really just kind of smashed the wall down of 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 our preconceptions of what an online gallery was and you said we meaning you and race race, yes. race who's like really proficient in yeah. Unreal Engine okay um, and he's he's a uh, a really interesting character, visual artist, DJ, and also sort of experimenter in this space. Yeah. Cool. Okay, well then, moving on from Akira now, you've got this next one you mentioned just earlier, the incredible magical moving stick exhibition with the, with the, okay. with the over there. So what's, what's kind of the common thread that binds them all? What, what is it? Yeah, what is it now? You said it's a GIF, a GIF, GIF exhibition? A GIF sticker exhibition. Yeah. So, so this, one is, <laughs> this one is for Aya, and what we did was we commissioned 30 stickers from different artists around the world like some of our favorite sticker artists yeah and the idea is we post them up on our instagram and then we can do one later and then what okay. happens is that like the audience or the public or whoever the followers you make a story you use a sticker in a kind of creative way a fun yeah. way and then what we do is we pick the best ones and then we're going to do an exhibition an outdoor nice. exhibition uh, on bus stops around around city during during art week so it's like uh, it's it's supposed to happen in January okay. and so right now you can submit or you can participate um, and basically it's a new idea I don't think I've seen a GIF sticker exhibition I certainly haven't seen one outside yeah. uh, but I think that was what we wanted to do was something that was digital but it still had a 
and impact in the real world. And, yeah. and the idea is also about GIF stick is like, with everybody locked down at home, and you, you may be getting a bit depressed away from your own surrounding or getting a bit bored, then maybe by inserting these kind of augmented stickers into your environment, you completely subvert mm -hmm. a, a boring situation. You know, I mean, you've got the melting head there, like that could be on a frying pan in your kitchen. And yeah, I think yeah. the act of thinking about what to do is a creative act. And I feel like it doesn't, you don't need to be able to draw. You don't need to be able to yeah. dance or sing. This is a really easy way of being creative and also hopefully building confidence in like whoever wants to express themselves. Yeah. And, and the fact that we've got this outdoor platform is, is really quite interesting. I'll show you some of the, uh, I did notice you used one of the uh, one of these gifs for for announcing our little panel discussion. Ah, the, yeah. The green, the green guy popping out. Oh yeah. So yeah, cool. So here's one of the stickers. This is by Sesame Seed Cat. Uh huh. She's hilarious. She's got this character called Uni Man. Okay. <laughs> and and he's riding a chicken McNugget. <laughs> and the idea is like you can just make a so, random scene and yeah. then and put the sticker on, right? Nice. Wait, wait, how many people, how many winners are you going to choose to showcase this? I think we're going to look for about 50, but we're already having like hundreds of wow. entries. So it's going to be a, a tough thing to curate. But I think the main thing is, like I said, the act of doing it is what we really want. We want people to feel like the barrier for entry to art and art exhibitions is, is lower, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of the problems with the art scene here in in Singapore and, and also in Asia is is this fine art tends to alienate a lot of the mm. broader public. And I think things like sneaker culture, street culture, they have much bigger followings. I mean, and photography is a really broad interest area for people in Singapore. So, so trying to kind of um, open that door a little more and, and hopefully like, Youngsters will feel like they can get involved yeah. in the, in the art scene yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, like you said, this is a, this is easy. This is no brainer. This is what we're all able to do. Yeah, there you go, the green guy. That's yeah, so about. that's that's by Homer Maxtis. Okay. This spider walk is by Zoot Ghost, is a Belgian artist. Nice. And this someone draws is a bubble tea going up the nose. You see? Yeah. Um, and they're like, you can just introduce them to any situation. So uh, we'll do it, eh? Yeah. So Hombre is one yeah. of our... Uh, yeah, Hombre, so I was just saying, uh, you know, you, you mentioned Hombre McStees. He incorporates old school stop motion drawing of gremlins doing kick, kick flips, <laughs> which is juxta, juxtaposed to everyday objects such as uh, them in the kitchen or a retail store and whatnot. So, um, like, how, what, how do you find these people and what, what's it like working with, with, you know, mutual creatives like this and... and, well, and you know, the, I love this here, this childhood wonderment. And this is what I'm seeing across the board with, with all these GIFs. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, well, Marty, I mean, uh, <laughs> Ombre Maxtis, he came to our GIF festival last year. So we do this festival once, a, uh, once every two years, rather, which is a big festival exhibition about GIFs. Mm. And, um, and he was one of the visiting artists. He came and gave a talk and a workshop about, you know, how to animate, like, these kind of in-situ cartoons, yeah, for yeah. want of a better word. Uh, he's worked on lots of high-profile projects. and But more importantly, he was like a big kid. And he, he really had a... He can look at any situation and, and turn it upside down. And I, and I feel like cartoonists are brilliant at that. And I feel like they can offer so much to the world. So Marty was one, one of our first choices to be on the GIF mm. sticker show. Mm. Um, and, I, and again, this idea of like uh, joking or having a sense of humor, mm. it's, it's a fundamental pillar of creativity. And I think, you know, people often complain like they don't see enough creativity in, in Singapore. And I'm like, well, you know, if you can tell a joke, right, that's creativity. It doesn't need to, it takes many forms. Mm. And I think like this, is an area which uh, we've been really, um, what's the word? We've been just sort of like, not blown away, but just really encouraged by 
the response and the imagination of these submissions that we're seeing and, and hopefully many more. I mean, the people watching now, yeah. you know, go and, go and have a look and have a go. And it's surprising at how easy it is to make something look good, you yeah. know, yeah. and how funny it can be and how shareable it is. And, and that's what we're, all we're trying to do, really, is get people interested, you know. I've got a few GIFs of myself. Uh, yeah. on there so like doing that one yeah they? you know like yeah <laughs> clapping and eating a durian and stuff like that so uh, yeah I'll, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely try and submit a, a few options in uh, for you as well so you gotta search for Aya okay E-Y-E Y-A-H is it that one nice Aya. and that's how you find it on Jiffy or on the Instagram stickers yeah so, uh, okay, I'll, we'll move on to our last question, Steve, because we, we, we've actually mentioned quite a lot, and uh, I think you've, you've managed to, to kind of get it all out there. And again, people, you just, you know, check out Aya and, and everything that's going on because it's, it's, it's very digital and online now. But um, are, there, are there any other interesting virtual experiences that have caught your eye outside of, of what you're doing? And, and how do you think the, the whole creative industry and scene can kind of learn from this. Um, how long have we got left? A <laughs> couple of minutes, give or take. Okay, so I think like, yeah, there's a lot going on now. I mean, in gaming and also um, fashion. I think fashion's probably been the most interesting in a sense of like those uh, video fashion shows. It just unlocks yeah. so much in terms of uh, what can be done visually. I think that's really interesting. And, and then the fact that they're not like confined to a catwalk, there's been some really uh, exciting work happening there. Um, I mentioned the, the, the concerts and the events in game with like Fortnite or whatever. Mm. They've been um, opening doors of perception. And I, and I think what's cool, I saw something recently was a warehouse, I think it was in Texas, and they set up these droids for want of a better word, actually, but it was uh, it was basically a, a robot light show. Yeah. But you, it was filmed, and so you watched it online, and it didn't matter if you were there. Yeah. Because it was like nobody was there. It was all kind of controlled, but in case one of the robots came to life and started <laughs> killing all the humans, <laughs> you know. But like basically, the the these. It's almost like installations that are filmed. And, and once you do that, you can get rid of like crowd issues. So, mm. um, uh, and, and under that same breath, when you're designing an exhibition now, it's interesting to think about it in terms of small groups of people because you can have really narrow corridors, whereas previously they'd be like choke points in a, oh, okay. in a big exhibition. But when you, if you're doing motion tracking, for example, like it responds a lot better when there's not many people yes, there. Yes. So there's advantages as well in terms of the digital space and a physical space. Um, but I think ultimately, like there's a walkthrough of the design museum. They've got a, a walkthrough of this latest um, uh, interactive digital exhibition. And I think that's, that's really interesting. So you, people are being a lot more proactive now about publishing uh, art shows that you would never have ever been able to see before, yeah. you know. So, so being in Singapore, we miss out on a lot of like, whatever some some cool shows in 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 the states or in Europe or wherever or Beijing, and now, because people are feeling like they've been enabled to to share it digitally, we're getting the benefit from yeah. that. Yeah, which is huge. Which is huge. And this kind of situation where I like, talk, like behind the scenes interview with the the artists or the creators, there's so much more to be gained as a creator watching and they're like the, the making of a film, you yeah. know? And I find that's really um, like been a big- It's like the director's cut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's been a big trend on artist process videos, yeah. um, director's process videos. So yeah, it's quite cool. Nice. Brother, thank you so much. Always, always good catching up with you. Uh, have some more whiskey. This is probably more of our, one of our more <laughs> sober catch-ups as well. So uh, <laughs> we'll have to rectify that for the next time. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Steve Lawler or Majoko, uh, again, hit up Aya, um, the upcoming uh, GIF exhibition. The, the, you know, there's a lot of things happening now, and, uh, and Steve is, is responsible for a lot of that creative stuff. So love, love him, love his work, and, and that's awesome.